welcome to the MGS Show, episode number 236. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. Good evening, Norman. Hello, how are you, man? Oh, just excited because it's only a few days until Halloween, but uh, for everyone who's going to be listening to this, it's already been Halloween, so haha, I'm still excited for it to happen. Yay, I can't wait for November 1st. Or fort, depending on when Overwatch wants to release Sombra. Oh, right, right. Overwatch is going to release a new character. Yep. Or maybe it's just a secret that they're actually not going to release Sombra, and it's something else. Where it's like a another ARG <laughs> to tease another character, and it's... <laughs> There's a lot of theories going on about the new level and whatnot, but hey, that's Overwatch for you. That's completely Overwatch for you. True, true. Season 7's gone. Sorry, uh, season 6 is over. <laughs> oh, season 7's over? Gosh, what time time traveling sort of shenanigans is this? <laughs> yeah, I don't. But no, season 6 is over, season 7's on the horizon, and well, uh, we are, we're temporarily away from doing the first impressions. That was fun. I, I really like the first impression bit. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it was fun, and ah, uh, what a good way to end this series, you know? True, true. Well, well, end the season. Series ain't over yet. Yeah, true. <laughs> the ride never ends. The ride never ends, Norman. <laughs> yep, it's true, it's true. But we can talk about other things now, like Overwatch. Or, as for me, I like to play Payday. So, yay, Payday. For you, it's the Gungeon. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, I used to pay play Payday. I could reinstall it, but, man, good luck trying to find teammates. <laughs> uh, I'm good. I have a crew. Oh, well, lucky. I could never find a crew. All I got was randos. Uh, I've been there. And, oh, let's just say it's not fun. Oh, it turns the entire game into a, I guess, a game of who screwed up this time? It's <laughs> you! Yeah. And talking about screw-ups, remember a few weeks ago uh, when I talked about the My Little Pony game? Mm-hmm. The, uh, the puzzle one, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I derp on not reporting. Screw up on me! <laughs> uh, but in all honesty, like, it's not Hasbro specifically, but the company that did the game, they screwed up. How so? Well, it seems that they... Pff, I don't know how to say this, if it's fair or not, but they kind of copied and pasted a pre-existing game called Toy Blast. That's not good. Yep, and my mom has this game. I played it, and... Oh my god, it's so similar. Mm, so it was just a reskin, that's all it was? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure. When I played it, it felt like a reskin, but it has some elements, but I'm not sure. I haven't played, uh, what did you call this? Toy Blast. And, well, I got no good answer or comments to say. They seem similar, they play about the same, they have the same mechanics. But I like ponies better, so yay ponies. Yeah, but the problem is mostly shovelware things are just so similar to begin with that um, it's it's really hard to actually claim that anyone is ripping another one off when they're just so similar itself. You'd have to also fight another one or another one or another one. Well, that's true, that's true. But if you guys click the link in the show notes, they have photo evidence, side-by-side -side comparison. And, oh, wow, yeah... Yeah, that's too close. Oh, well. At least I'm not on the team. I'm not responsible for that atrocity. <laughs> uh, honestly, my report on the game is I've been playing it for two weeks now. It's a fun game. It's kill time kind of game. And it's progressively difficult as it goes on with what you need to do and whatnot. But hey, it's one of those games, right? But anywho, uh, besides that, you mentioned earlier on... Halloween's around the corner, so it's kind of a holiday, right? Yeah, more holiday season fun. I remember on the latest review show, you talk about the whole Thanksgiving and the Black Friday thing. It's around the corner and whatnot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Black Friday. Glad I'm not in retail anymore. But anywho, it seems that the company called Fanjoy.co is, well, having this kind of loot box kind of deal where you get to put in pony stuff in it. Like, it's 
kind of a present kind, like a specific present that you give for a person. And set box includes, let's see, a really good looking box for the holidays. T-shirts, one for adults shirt and a kid's shirt. I, I think it's separate. But yeah, uh, there's a kid's shirt, there's an adult shirt. There's also um, exclusive comic book cover. So probably one of the annuals. Let's see, what's a comic book cover? Yeah, it's the holiday theme cover, something to do with this year's comic. I, I don't know. And stickers and the pony soundtrack and a random mini figure. Yay. Oh, mystery mini. Hmm, mm, cool. One of those fun cover mini figures. It's a good gift idea to give to a person you know, like me, because since today's my birthday. Yay. It is? Why didn't you tell me sooner? Yes. Shameless plug. <laughs> Well, happy freaking birthday uh, to you. How old are you turning now? Uh, let's just say old. Oh. But anywho, uh, this this is one of those things where you can buy it and send it off to a good brony friend of yours or a person who really enjoys the show. The show's not bad too. I, I'm looking at it right now and I like it. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, but the cost is about 55 bucks. So, yeesh, that's deep. Uh, that's a little spendy, but you know what? Considering how much it comes in it, that's probably actually kind of a good deal. You get that sent in time, and it'll be a good Christmas present for somebody. Yeah. That's what people like, man. Like, a good Christmas present, like, tailored to them. It's really cool. Yeah. That's why I give everyone the gift that keeps on giving. Disappointment. Oh, I thought it was fruitcakes. Well, that's the gift that just makes yourself a new doorstep. I thought it gifts on giving because people recycle them. <laughs> Or the, the literal gift that keeps on giving, self-replicating popcorn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you think, That's well, you think it's nice until you suddenly start having the entire kitchen full of it and it starts leaking out the windows and the door, and pretty soon you're wondering why you even started up the damn machine to begin with. <laughs> True that. Uh, well, you just put it in Africa and all the kids have fun. <laughs> oh, God, it's like, it's raining popcorn. Yay. <laughs> it's hot, but it's so buttery. It's manna from heaven. No, it's from the popcorn machine. <laughs> uh, 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 but on to the next news topic is... Remember last season... Um, ah, This is a bit spoilery, but be forewarned, this has something to do with the season end. If you haven't watched it, uh, skip about five minutes in, I hope. Yeah, but it's been a week. It's been a week now, folks. Watch it. Go watch it. Yep, yep. But anywho, um, in the last episode, we, we got the new changelings, or whatever they are, jelly bean ponies, skittle ponies, or whatever it is. Um, they're there. They need to do buck look. It's really colorful. Yeesh. But uh, someone asked Big Jim, do those changelings have any specific name? Like the changeling, like the chrysalis type, they're black and all holy. Um, with this one, the new jelly bean ponies or jelly bean changelings, what are their specific name? And Jim uh, said that um, if it wasn't mentioned in the episode, you sh- have to wait to see in season seven. So that's an interesting development. More more newlings, or you know, my my money's on flutter ponies. Flutter ponies. <laughs> I have to wait and see because this is. Something really random. They're still changelings, but we need to see their ability in action. Um, yeah. Jim also mentioned that you guys sure love reaching. Basically, all I said was that I could say one way or another, meaning that um, he can't say it directly because it's spoiler or it's still in the works or he just can't really say it for now. It could be related to season 7. Well, whatever it is, Check out this transcript. Probably it's there. If it's not, well, wait for season 7. It's just around the corner. Yeah, can we wait that long? I don't know. It's so far away. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. You remember that, uh, what you want to call this, Explore Equestria gig that uh, Hasbro tried to do with their website about them exploring Equestria, Pony rating, uh, Ponyville, uh, whatever, Star Hour of something. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like a thing on their website sort of thing. Yeah, and what came out of it? <laughs> Nothing, right? I don't know. It was an interesting side thing to do, I guess. 
really wasn't anything. It wasn't anything new. So it's like, I mean, if you've watched the show, it, it, you've already seen everything. Yeah, true that, true that. But you know what? Um, a product under the Explore Equestria tag came out, and it is a vinyl um, entitled Explore Equestria Greatest Hits. So, what can I, I don't want to hit vinyl. She's a great pony. Um, I'm talking about the black ring uh, disc thing, you know. Oh, you mean a, you mean you mean a, a vinyl uh, record, a vinyl disc, a yes. vinyl record. Oh, okay, okay. I thought we were talking about vinyl scratch. Okay, we don't want to we don't want to know about her greatest hits. <laughs> oh, yep, that's true. But yeah, um, one of those uh, classic and retro kind of thing seems to make a comeback, and DJs are all around the world using it. But anyway, um, it seems that we'll be getting this unique swag on November twenty fifth, and there's only uh, there's only two thousand copies of this thing. So get them while they're hot. No, don't get them while they're hot. They'll melt. Get get them while they're cool. Oh uh, yes. You don't you don't want to warp your uh, final records. Yeah, true <laughs> that. So um, there's also track listing on this. Uh, side A has the theme song, the Triple B F F song. It's it's all songs that are available now. So yeah, that's cool. And there's two sides of this. You know, final record has two sides. And this is not the first time that Hasbro did this kind of thing. Um, previously we had few of the CD version turn into vinyl. So that's cool. Mm. Now I'm just waiting for the remixes from the DJs. Your big brother, 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 best friend forever. <laughs> oh yeah, remix. Don't forget the horn. The horn's always important in any remix. Oh album. yeah, completely. I don't know how to segue into this because this one is a bit depressing. You know how to do this one? How do we jump into this one? You know what? I don't think we can, Norman. We're just going to have to go right into it. There's no segue that I can work with this. Anyway... In recent in recent news, there was a Brony fan artist who had to announce that she was actually going to uh, she was leaving the convention scene, and it wasn't because she had other projects or time didn't allow it. It's actually because uh, she has brain cancer. Uh, this was uh, Jen Blake. Uh, she's uh, known in the Pony fan art community, and if you've been to multiple conventions, uh, you may have seen her stuff there. But uh, fortunately, you know, she got cancer, and so she opened up a GoFundMe account to help uh, fund for her uh, medical uh, needs. And uh, people have been donating to it. And um, Mm -hmm. uh, she already met her goal, but uh, every little bit helps. And, I mean, let's be honest here, American American medical practices, well, we may be pretty good at stuff, we charge through the roof. And every little bit could help her with this. Yeah, but I have to correct you on something there, Wills. Uh, she's not a mm-hmm. fan artist, but she's one of the official artists for the comics. Remember the... I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, you remember the Diamond Tiara, Silver Spoon, Friends Forever? I... Some of them, not all of them. I don't think I've read. But anywho, um, she was the one that did the Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, my Friends Forever comic. Okay, that one. All right, yeah, I did read that one. Yeah, so she was the artist for that one, and I've been wondering, why haven't we seen her art in a while? And, well, this explains a lot. This explains a lot. So, links are in the show notes if you want to donate to uh, Jen's GoFundMe page, because she deserves every bit, and like it or hate it, to me, she's a really awesome artist, and having this happen, it's no fun. Come on. Cancer all around was cancer all around is not good. It's it's there's nothing positive to say about it, but I am very proud of what people have done to help a fellow human being in need. Yep, true that true. And I got no good segue for this one. So anyway, um next month is going to be Malaysia's second brony convention called the Friendship Express. And with any convention there's a charity thing going on. And for this one, TFE, the Friendship Express, are going to help two charity associations. One is the SPCA, and one is the National Cancer Society of Malaysia. And if you are going there, 
you can well donate. The minimum donation is a hundred ringgit, and with every donation, you get a pony plush. Lim- uh, stocks are limited, so it is a first come first of basis. So yay, that's awesome! If you can donate to um, the event for TFE, you can still donate to your local charity thing. Um, SBCA is worldwide. And uh, cancer, um, the cancer society. I'm sure you guys have your own thing there, right? So yeah, you can donate it there too. Yeah, let's all kick cancer's butt. Yeah, cancer's butt deserve to be kicked, kicked, kicked. kicked. What's the best term? Kicked. Well, kicked. Kicked. Yes, it deserves to be kicked. I'm not sure if I'm using that right. But anywho, um, best news for this week, really. Um, kind of. I thought it was long, but. We are reaching at straws with how we use our words. <laughs> <laughs> we're also re- learning that we are not as good as segues as we thought we were. Yep. And also, I'm sick. Yes. I uh-huh. got the flu, and today's my birthday, so yeah, all fun around. <coughs> mm. Well, it's okay, Norman. I mean, even if you're sick, you can still take it easy, right? Yep. But still, if I really want to take easy, I should have record today. <laughs> yeah. What the heck, man? Come on. Recording while you're sick? What's next? Recording while you've got, like, you know, uh, you know like a badger attached to you? It'll be an interesting episode. <laughs> yeah, the, the recording over the screams of pain will be quite tricky. Yeah, we'll, uh, but we'll edit everything out. <laughs> It'll, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Uh, so, well, that's the news for this week. I want, I, I want to go off topic for a bit because, well, it's the hiatus. No new episode coming out. Everybody's enjoying life, as they say, away from the shackle of ponies. They're going out to the world, enjoying life to the fullest before the start of season seven comes in and shackles them down. <laughs> so I'm going to try something new and that something new is what have we been doing? So let's start with you, Will. Oh, put me on the spot. Uh, uh, I, I certainly have not been, you know, secretly planning on overthrowing all the world governments and, you know, taking over the entire world with with an army of hamsters. Definitely not doing that. That will be interesting if it happens. <laughs> interesting if it does happen. More like soon. But no, 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 that's not happening at all. No, no, what I have been up to lately is gearing up for oh, a LARP in Detroit Ooh. to meet my friends there. And yes, I'm so gigantic of a nerd, I LARP. Oh, wow. So um, for people who do not know what LARP is, could you give them the skinny? Uh, live action role play. Basically, it's like playing Dungeons and Dragons, only you dress up as your character, and you physically have to move yourself. And they have people who play as the NPCs, and people who play as the monsters, and people who play as you know, different characters. We got a small group of like, uh, 40 people. That's small. Uh, so, yeah, that's small. Large ones have like 200. Wow. How do you even manage that? Like, I know LARP can be, uh, let's just say that besides the point it being silly and nerdy and stuff, from what I understand, it can be a very personal environment where any new person comes in, they would be treated unfairly because of their new status. Oh, that can, that can happen. Really, it's, it's all about, um, Basically, what it, what it comes down to, LARPing, is actually more so if you love acting and you love uh, theater, it's basically that. Hmm. Uh, it, it's a chance for if you your inner theater geek to shine. You get to basically play a full character nearly 24-7. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, you can really get into the role and just uh, have a blast with other people. Like, <coughs> I, I play... Um, a char- I, I play a character who's known as uh, Mage McFinnigan, yeah. and yeah, you you uh, <laughs> uh, and one of the char- I took one of the characters from one of my stories and just decided to expand upon it, and he's just, just this eccentric, um, scholarly sort of guy who's read books his entire life, so he knows a whole bunch about stuff, but when it comes to actually doing things, he's like, okay, uh, I think I'm going to sing tenor, and it's like. Tenor, yeah, ten or twelve miles away from this battle. Toodles. <laughs> uh, 
Heck, we had it one one time where um, at the last LARP, um, basically my character has the ability to teleport, which means I can go outside of game for ten seconds, and I'm invulnerable, uh, and I can I can move as far as I can in ten seconds without being harmed. The entire group got surrounded by orcs. Ooh. Uh, one of my best friends playing Flint Ballad, he <laughs> said, "Damn, what a tight spot!" And to which I said, "No, you're in a tight spot. <laughs> I move unseen." <laughs> And I just basically teleported, a, ran ten seconds in the exact opposite direction, you know, past the guards and whatnot. And he's just like, "That's not a word." You then. <laughs> oh god! And so, so that everybody starts fighting, and then you know, I come up from behind and I start throwing spell packets at them, and you know, from behind because they weren't paying attention. And then it's just like, "See, I don't leave my friends hanging." You only helped when they lowered the number. When we started actually winning. You can't prove that. Oh, that sounds so fun. I bet that whole thing, people were giggling at it. Oh, um, you know, afterwards, you know, people were saying, it's just like, there, I mean, there were a lot of cool stuff that happened. Uh, oh, we had, um, there was actually, uh, this particular LARP, mm-hmm. we had, um, it, it was like a festival that I'm using air quotes there. Mm-hmm. Basically they had each day, they had uh, a certain number of events at certain times, basically just for people to compete. Mm. And it was everything from uh trivia, like just knowledge about regular stuff to um, a drinking competition, which was more so like a card game um, archery, which was actual archery uh, shot put, you know, strength and whatnot and running. And in running, uh, we actually had, um, two of the most athletic people decided to do running, of course. <laughs> and they took off full bore and they actually ran around this entire circuit full bore. And when they came back, it was just like, they were both on the ground, just panting the heck out of each other. I was actually kind of worried one of them was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> oh, so we no. just got them water. It was just like, guys, you didn't have to push yourself that hard. It's like, but the thing is, they were so far ahead of the other four people uh-huh. that we literally waited around 45 seconds for the other people to then come around the band. It was like, these guys sprinted all the way. Oh, wow. Which, which is actually, which actually is kind of funny because one of them was Navy and one of them was, uh, one of them was army, so it was Navy versus army, basically. <laughs> they do have that um, competition going on with them, like it's a known thing. Mm. Oh yeah, but yeah, like, well, that's just an example of, of the silliness that can happen in that. Mm. Well, you you sound like you're gonna have a good time. Oh yeah, it's the last one. It's gonna be on November, and um, it's gonna be the last one of the year. And then after that, it's going to be, uh, uh, we won't have the next one until June. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sounds like this is kind of a meetup kind of deal. Yeah, uh, the thing is, actually, the only reason I went to this particular LARP was because, uh, well, basically, one of my best friends who I met in DeviantArt, he's been my friend for 10 years, and uh, him and another girl are my best friends, basically. And they was like, yeah, we got a LARP group. I'm like, you know what? I've never been to a LARP. He's like, well, you should come out. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I will. <laughs> so I am the only one who travels the furthest for this LARP group, basically. <laughs> wow. Still, that's awesome. Uh, so that's what you're going to be doing. And well, as for me, what have I been doing? Besides taking care of Sweetie Bot with the whole show, um, not much really. Um, Just been playing a few games here and there, mostly uh, Payday 2 and Overwatch. Um, Street Fighters mix in there a bit, depending on how I feel at the time. But um, Overwatch seems f- fun, and Payday 2 seems fun too. Two totally different game in feel and condition. Like Overwatch is yeah. more of a fun shooter where each character have their own skill sets and it's just colorful and wacky. While Payday 2 is more skill based and the more you play, the more you know, and building your character up, and I, uh, it's it's unforgiving. It's totally unforgiving. Yeah, especially with uh, what you decide to do with your character. If you just don't know what you're doing, it's not fun. Uh, if you if uh, if you don't even know what uh, type of character you have to begin with, you can actually just have situations where it's like. Uh, you have all the wrong skills for the situation. Oh, yeah, and that's the thing, too. It's skill-based and personal skill. Like, you need to play a lot just to get to know the feel. 
And as for me, I've been playing that game for over 400 hours. So damn, man. I love it. I, I love the game. It's difficult. It's wacky. It's just insane. And DLC for the game, uh, it came out three years ago, and Overkill, the company that makes the game, still supports that game. Yeah, I kind of wish though they made bundle packs for their DLC instead of having to buy all of it because it's like oh, yeah. eighty bucks worth of DLC or something right now. Oh, um, I'm not sure if it's still up. Uh, I'm not sure if it will still be up, but as of now, the game has a seventy-five percent discount for. All of the DLC, excluding the newest one. Oh, oh well, heck, that's a good deal. Yeah, so seventy-five percent off is what four ninety-nine for DLC, is it? So that would make it ninety-nine cents, probably. I, I don't know, forty cents. That's not too bad. Yeah, and some of them are good, some of them are bad. Um, I would personally go for the barbecue pack if you want to buy DLC, because you get a flamethrower. <laughs> what could go wrong, right? Everything. Oh, uh, yeah, totally. It's payday. <laughs> Everything yeah. goes wrong. Actually, I love it how the cops react to you when you have certain items. Like, does that guy have a... That's not a word! ...many gun? <laughs> These guys are supposed to be bank robbers! <laughs> uh, I never heard that before, really, now. Yeah, I mean, there's actually some, there's actually some pretty funny lines and whatnot. It's very rare, but uh, but I did hear a cop once say, it's just like, and it was just three days. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. It's a fun, silly game. Mm-hmm. Very violent, though. Yeah, if you get some groups, uh, you can you, you can complete the entire mission and actually not kill anyone and uh, complete it completely stealthily. That's just freaking awesome. Yeah, it depends on the mission, too. I mean, um, the appeal for PD2 is mostly the loud missions, and the guns, the mods, is basically the skill tree that you're doing. And since um, every character is different in terms of build, you're going to have a lot of variety and a lot of wacky gameplay. A lot of crazy gameplay. Yep. And Wills, uh, you haven't been playing the game recently, right? Like, when was your last play? Oh, like eight months ago or something. Eight months. If you play the game now, it's totally different. They overhauled the whole engine. Or the whole oh. game mechanic. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I haven't played since like the, like they had just released the uh, the cars. Cars mission. Yeah, the one where you rob car rob cars out of a auto out dealership. Of a dealership. Yeah, the auto dealership. Oh wow, that is so long. I usually eight months. Like that feels like two years ago, a year ago. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Still, um, if you do decide to play that game, let me know. I'll kind of teach you about it and stuff. And people at home, um, I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but tweet me and ask if I'm interested in gaming with you. So obviously on Steam, uh, the console version of the game, I do not recommend because it's not worth the money. Basically, why I say Payday 2 on PC is better because you can mod your game. Uh, give it HUD, indicating good things like how many radios do you have or pagers, how many hostages are there, how many guards are there, and a lot of good things. Um, you won't have that in the console version. Ah, uh, yeah. That's the always best thing of where PC is again, Master Race. True, but if there's nobody playing the game, then it's nothing. Yeah, that too. <laughs> True that. Uh, but still, there's still Overwatch. Uh, Overwatch is fun. And I do recommend it. Same thing, if you want to play with me, just tweet at me and I'll see what I can do. Maybe we'll hook up and play on a game date. Maybe. Yeah, except me. Don't play Overwatch with me. I rage. Ye- Hard. Yes. Norman knows that. Yes. It's sometimes not your fault. It's mostly the team that kind of play. But yesterday we had a really good game. It seems that like we were losing, but hey, we, we pulled it through. Yeah, we pulled through some, but let's face it, Norman. We have horrible luck. Yeah, that's why we need to get a lot of people in. Maybe I'll create a Discord channel for gaming specifically. You know, that, that'll be cool, right? Oh, that'll be interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if people want to join in that channel and play games with us, we usually play games right after we record, depending on the time and how we feel. Like, I'm sure today is not a good day, right? You need to continue your chores and I need to get a rest. 
Oh, yeah. You need bed rest. I need to get this house clean. Yeah. Dang it, man. This house will be clean by the time I'm done with it. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. But anyway, we have Dilly Dally for a while now, giving you content about not related to the show, Ponies, because it's on the hiatus now, and Comic Reviews is coming out, well, Thursday, a day after this episode's come out. Yay! So, anywho, back on track. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And if you want to catch me, I am at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And if you would like to, you know, um, play games with me or plan a game date, just tweet me there. I'll see what I can do. Not promising you that there's a confirmation, but we'll plan something, right? Entirely. Indeed. And where can the people find you, Wills? Uh, you can find me on Fim Fiction at Willazen uh, on FimFiction.com. And you can also find me at Willazen uh, DeviantArt and Willazen on Tumblr. Uh, Fim Fiction, I write about adventure stories on DeviantArt. I doodle everything I can. And on Tumblr, I reblog a lot of things to deal with comedy and uh, Dungeons and & Dragons. Which are funny. I still remember the story you told us about the character that you did who in- intimidates oh, wood. Oh, that, uh, that wasn't me. That was Grog, Intimidator of Wood. <laughs> Angry Carpenter. Yes. <laughs> yes, that was so much fun. I think that was in the review. I hope it was in the review. Uh, was it in the review? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure, but that was Krod, the Angry Carpenter. Yeah. Yes. That, that is a classic, uh, that is a classic tale. Yeah. Of, and, uh, D&D. And I also like the story you told about, uh, attacking Gazebo. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, attacking a Gazebo. Uh, well, maybe you should come on for Dungeon in Discord. That'll be cool. <laughs> But anywho, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. And also please subscribe to the MBS Show's newest project, the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. If you want to hear our reviews on 28 Pranks Later, or um, something recently, the times they are changeling, it's going to be there. Well, we reviewed that episode. Seriously, there's nothing else to say. Um, one thing I can say is that Will's doing the cover art for that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be very uh, buggy, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I, hope it, I hope it's not a cover that will bug you too much. <laughs> yeah. And also, if I do remember right, stories there, I think? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, sure, but I do remember that it was... A life changing experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been well. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the show. See ya. Toodles, everybody.